Hello there! In this video, we're going to be doing something slightly different. We're going to be doing a demo where I walk through the steps that I take when making simple scenes in After Effects. The goal is that we're going to be utilizing the material that I've covered in the last three videos, and in the future, further in the series, I'll also be doing more demos, utilizing more and more information that we cover in each lesson. So the idea is, is that with each demo, we should be able to make more complex scenes with more complex animations. So for now, we're going to start pretty simple. So I'm going to hit my new composition button and make a new composition we can work in, 1920 by 1080 with a frame rate of 30. And the duration seems fine for now since I'm not going to be working with any audio. So I've already imported three PNG files that we can work with. These are some files from some previous projects that I've done. And I'm going to start by shrinking them because they are quite big right now. So I'm going to shrink them to a size where I can basically see them fully. So it looks like a scale of 15% seems good or so. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start setting up the scenes so that I can do camera movements. So first, I'm going to select all of my layers and make them 3D. And now I'm going to start positioning them how I want. So let's see, I'm going to open up the position for all of them and start moving them around. So I'll move this one over to the right. I'll put this one in the center. And let's say I want the one in the center to be the furthest back. I'm going to take our Z position, and the more positive the Z position is, the further back something is. So I'm going to drag this to the right and increase it. I tend to try not to make the numbers over around 2000 or so because I find it a little bit harder to navigate. So I'm just going to drag the Z position down to maybe like a thousand. And then I'm going to move this one. This one is fine at zero. I'm going to take this one over here and I'm going to drag it forward. So I'm going to make the Z position negative. Maybe at around like 600 or so is okay. So I'm going to start with this as my base. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click our timeline. I'm going to go to new null and new camera. And then these default settings are fine. I'm going to hit OK. Let me just drag our null and our camera to the top. Let me also make a simple background for this. So I'm also just going to right click the timeline, go to new solid. And for now, we can we can just go with a white solid. I'm going to drag this to white, hit OK, and then I'm going to drag this to the bottom of the composition. So now I'm going to go to our null, and we also need to set this one to a 3D layer. So I'm going to hit this empty box here to make it 3D. And I'm also going to take our camera's Naruto symbol thing, and I'm going to, gra I'm going to grab it and drag it to the null to parent it. Alright, so now I'm going to start getting into keyframing. So I'm going to open up the position of our null here. And I'm going to start animating the X, Y, and Z position. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch for all three of them. And let's say I want to have this zoom out over two seconds. I'm going to go to two seconds, and I'm actually going to make a keyframe where our current position is. Maybe I'll move it up a little since the character's head is a little cut out. This is a little slow, so I'm also going to drop the resolution to a quarter for now. It's a little blurrier, but now it's a little smoother. So let's say I wanted to zoom out to around this point. I'm going to go back to our first keyframe, and then I'm just going to zoom in really far. And personally, I like to zoom into a point where if you zoom in further, we'll actually move past the character. But I feel like the animation gets a little bit, hmm, a little bit bumpy when you move past the character because it suddenly there's a frame where the character suddenly appears on the screen and it feels a little sudden. So I like to zoom in just really, really close to the color. Now we have this simple zoom out animation. So now what I'm actually going to do is start editing the keyframes. So I'm going to highlight all of them, and I'm going to hit F9 to change them all to easy ease. And I'm going to open up our graph editor over here. And I'm actually looking at the speed graph right now. So if you're following along with me, your graph might look more like this. So I'm going to go to the speed graph, and I'm just going to take this handle and drag it all the way to the left. So now let's see what this looks like so far. I'm just going to pre-render play, now we have this simple animation here. So far this already looks really good, but if I want to maybe change up the positions again of the character, let's say I want it to have more depth, I can go back in our position here and let's say I can take this one, nudge it forward a little bit more. Maybe I'll also move this upwards. Yeah, now this looks a little bit nicer. So now we can start adding a little bit of detail to, the, to this. So let's say maybe let's have a circle in the background. I'm going to make a new shape layer. 
and then I'm going to add an ellipse to this and then add a fill. Let's change the color. I'll make it like teal-ish maybe? What color is teal? <laughs> maybe like around here. I can always adjust this later so it's not really a big deal. I'm going to drag this behind the characters and I'm also going to make this one a 3D layer. So I'm going to hit this box here and make it 3D. First, I'm going to make this a lot bigger, so I'm going to our ellipse size and I'm going to increase the size of this. And then I'm going to hit the layer, hit P, and then go into our Z position and I'm going to move it backwards behind this character. So next, I'm actually going to animate the size of this circle. Actually, instead of a fill, I'm going to go back and swap this to a stroke. So I just deleted our fill and I'm going to go to stroke instead. And... I'll add this blue stroke. And just make it a little bit thicker. So what I'm actually going to do is I am going to animate both the sides and the stroke width. So I'm going to the first keyframe and I'm going to... I'm going to leave the size as is and I'll leave the stroke as is as well. Now I'm going to go to two seconds. And I'm going to make the size bigger, maybe around here. And also set the stroke to zero. I'm actually going to go back to our first keyframe and make this circle a bit smaller so that way it can grow over time. Alright, so now we have this sort of circle animation. And then I'm going to go select them again, hit F9 to easy ease, and then I'm going to open up the graph editor again. And again, I'm just going to take this handle and drag it over to the left for both the stroke width and the size. So now if I view this, now we have this little circle animation together. So you can see that just with the things that we've learned in this in the first three lessons, we've already started to see some pieces of how we can start building a scene. We have a little background going on, we have a simple animation. Now let's say I want to do another scene. Like I want to zoom in a little bit more, I want to do another camera animation. What I'm actually going to do is instead of using the same camera and null, I'm actually going to hit alt right bracket to shrink this to the current point. And then I'm going to copy paste this camera and null and create another one of the exact same. So I'm going to go back to the position of our null and then I'm going to re keyframe this to something else. So let's say I want to do like a side animation. Maybe like a side pan like this zoomed in on these two characters. I'll make our ending keyframe look kind of like this. And then I'm going to go back to the first keyframe and just pull it to the left. And I'm going to do the same thing again where I'm going to take all our keyframes. I'm going to hit Alt, sorry, not Alt. I'm going to hit F9 to change it to Easy Ease. And just to keep it simple, I'm going to do the same keyframe animation again where I have our speed graph and I'm going to pull the yellow handle of the right keyframe all the way to the left. I'm just going to go back and see what our scene looks like now. All right, so now that it's all pre-rendered, we have this. And now we have this. I can also select all of my layers. I'm going to turn on the motion blur so we can see what this looks like with a little more motion blur and watch it again. Oop, I need to wait for it to pre-render first. It's pre-rendering. It'll be pretty quick. All right, and now we can watch it. And now you can see that we're starting to get somewhere. It's looking pretty good. I highly recommend that you try doing this sort of simple task yourself where you take some images, maybe practice some panning, maybe add some shape layers, or maybe start adding text layers to this somewhere just to, just to get a feel for the program and how to get around navigating it. So for now, this is going to be all we're going to cover in this demo for now. And then in a future demo, we will start adding effects and other things to this. So it'll start getting a little bit prettier. Well, for now, great job on getting this far, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Take care.